don't like it. It's, it's no, no numbers. There's no pictures. There's no videos. There's no, no gameplay. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yo, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hope you guys are doing well, hope everyone's having a good day so far today, Freemers, I've missed out on a lot, I have, true, sure, yeah, missed out on a ton, because I have moved into a new location, so I'm in a new space, I'm here to record more content for you guys, because I know you've missed me, right, right, you miss me, right, come on, come on, I know you guys have missed me, I know you have, but... We got to get into some more Palia news. This is a new update. Um, actually, two new updates because I've currently, uh, I've missed out on a lot and I, I want to catch up. So we're going to go over these real quick. I'm not going to show off any gameplay, but I do want to read over all this. So why don't we just go ahead and get into it? So dev update, September 2023. Uh, it's been an action-packed month for Palia from the Maji Market to the Temple of Flames, not to mention befriending Tao and dozens of other feature updates. Uh, we hope that everything you've seen in patch 0 0.167 and 0 0.168 has made you even more excited for what else is to come. In case you missed our very first dev update, last month dev updates are regular check-ins from the Palia development team where we cover your most requested features and recent hot topics. We see tons of check-in from the community every day. Congratulations to Discord for hitting 300k members. And while we may not be able to cover everything you've discussed in the below dev update we hope that these sneak peeks give you lots to look forward to in the months to come i'm going to close this real quick close palia i think it's causing issues anyway <laughs> uh coming soon obstacle course we've always envisioned palia as a game that is capable of containing many different types of experiences while our core experience is that of a community sim just building the pieces to make that experience enabled us to more easily make experiences that are more typical in other game genres with some of the same components. With that in mind, we have an experimental feature dropping in an upcoming patch, an obstacle course. This is interesting, man. I think it could be fun. Um, I don't know. I'm very like, I think it could work in the fact that like, you know, it's a, it's a community sim, right? They said that. I think it could work because this would, you know, um, allow players to participate more in the game and not only that like free realms also had this feature you know it had this thing where you could like you know you could do little obstacle courses on people's people's lots and i think that was really cool and there were also like little obstacle courses kind of in the open world but i think this is gonna bring a lot of more people in uh Early look at the obstacle course feature. Note, th there have already been visual changes since this image was taken, like fog being added to the environment. Okay. <laughs> I also love that it's in space. I don't know if that's the environment, but that looks cool. Um, moving in Pali is already pretty fun, and many of you spend a lot of time trying to climb to the top of anything you can lay your eyes on. However, a focused platforming challenge is still a different experience to what is typical in Palia. Obstacle courses are often challenging and test players differently than most our existing content does as such we don't think this is an experience that will appeal to all pallians but we think that's okay as long as there is a core group it does speak to true because not everyone likes to you know uh farm materials or farm it, um resources in the wild like not everyone goes to bari bay and does that but there are certain there is a certain group of people that love doing that you know that love getting together and finding all these resources out in the wild um uh, because we don't want people to feel like this is an experience that they have to participate in, we have not put any unique rewards behind competing, behind completing it that a cozy gamer would feel like they ought, absolutely have to ha had to have. Ex example, uh, there was no unique plushy lot behind completing this activity. Completing the course is more about earning a sense of accomplishment and being able to show that off than any other reward. See, that's interesting. So there's no reward behind it, yet... That's weird. I don't know if I like that. I think there should be a reward behind it because then the content seems kind of pointless unless they have a system behind it that, you know, they track a score or track a fastest time. I don't know. Um, I guess I would have to try it in game, but we'll see what happens. Uh, flow tree groves. We've seen a lot of feedback around flow trees being too rare, even more rare than expected for magical glowing purple trees. That's not true. I think a lot of people are getting that wrong. If a lot of people are saying flow trees are being 
are too rare, no one's actually trying to get flow trees or no one's actually looking. Like, sure, they may, they may not be in every single server. There was a server I was in where one dude found, like, five in, like, five minutes. Like, it it, it varies, you know? But I, I do understand that, you know, there are some servers that don't have flow trees and you have to keep refreshing to get, you know, the flow trees. But, anywho, uh, as the temples begin to awaken, more flow has begun to churn throughout the land. Because of this, you will start to see groves of flow trees start to emerge. Flow tree groves will appear of small groupings of flow trees in various sizes. Once per Pallian day, a small grouping of flow trees will appear for players to find in Bahari. Okay, cool. So like where everyone goes to farm resources. You will be able to see a visible plume of flow from a further distance than you would lo with a single flow tree. Coupled with the flare arrows and proximity chat discussed below, gathering folks in the server to chop down flow trees will be easier than ever. Coupled with flare arrows and proximity chat. Wait, proximity chat? Oh, wait, is that voice chat or is that, like, text chat? What are we talking about there? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> um, okay, so, flare arrows. We know that signaling your location on a map to other players can be difficult in a variety of situations across Palia. With that in mind, we've been tinkering with flare arrows and can't wait for this new addition to help players with this challenge moving forward. Early look at flare arrow testing. Here's how they work. Uh, flare arrows deal no damage and do not alert nearby creatures. It will leave a lingering visual effect in the sky for one minute, high into the air. The color of the flare will be randomized. Players will only be able to have one active flare arrow at a time, and firing a flare arrow while you already have one active will cancel out the first one. Start saving your resources now so you can great alert your friends as soon as they're added to the Palia. This is the recipe. Five heartwood plus five flint plus one crystal lake lotus. Okay, that's not too bad. Craft, crafts five at a time. We can't wait to see these light up the sky. Proximity chat. In addition to flare arrows, another frequently requested feature we're looking into for the near future that will support spontaneous multiplayer communication and activities is proximity chat. So what does that mean? Proximity chat will be a new text channel that allows players to send messages exclusively to players in their vicinity. Okay, so not voice chat, but it is prox chat. So it's not like a bubble text message like in Free Realms, but it's... See, I don't think... I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, because I feel like it's pointless because, well, maybe not. I don't know because I feel like in Bahari Bay, if someone tells you to go to a location, it's not that hard to find. And it's also not that hard to find the person. Now, I think what I would like to see is probably the text bubble. I don't know. Cause then if people are, if people have those bubbles up to those text bubbles, like Free Realms had, you'll be able to see those text bubbles, you know, a more visual feature. But I think it, it's cool. I, I will use it, probably. Uh, we hope it'll make it easier for players to have more intimate conversations, role play, okay, and coordinate gameplay. In our local tests, it already feels so freeing to be able to just chat with the person next to you instead of spamming the whole server. I get that. I get not cluttering up the whole global text chat because not everyone is talking about the same thing. That's cool. I like that. We hope it'll make it easier for players to have... Oh, uh, in our local... Where was I at? <laughs> okay. Uh, you can expect to try this feature for yourself in the next couple months. Okay, so it'll be a while. Ammo and bait and quest pouches. We've seen a lot of feedback around managing bag inventory when players are out in the world. To save you some trip back and forth to your housing plot, we are adding separate places for you to store ammo, bait, and quest items called pouches. There will be two different pouches on an ammo and bait pouch and a quest item pouch. Cool. Cool. I like that. Uh... You will be able to manage the items in these pouches by simply toggling to dedicate tabs in your player menu. When created or looted, ammo and bait and quest items will go directly to these dedicated pouches. No management required. You start with one complete row of dedicated ammo and bait slots. Uh, ammo. I don't know if I want to read all of this, but that's cool though that they're adding that because it can fill up really quick. <laughs> it can it can really fill up. So that's cool. Um, Improvements to the workbench? On last patch's episode, you saw our first step towards improving the experience with the workbench when we introduced the ability to multi-craft. Uh, this update means you can craft multiple batches of ammo, decor, and furniture, and anything else as you f can find at the workbench in coins up to 99 instantly, as long as you have the materials. Coming, oh, coming up next, you can look forward to even more improvements, including sorting options and updated tabs. Several other additional changes follow in patches beyond that. Who doesn't love a workbench screenshot? That is a mess. I've already said this. This is a mess. My, my, I will say this. My land 
my plot, okay, is so organized. Pretty organized. It's pretty cool. Uh, mining and star stones. Uh, the Manji culture is deeply influenced by the stars and moons. Part of this culture that we haven't yet shared in Pali are star stones, which reflect your Luna sign. Oh, what are we doing? I got to stop doing that. Are we doing star charts now? Are we, are we getting spiritual? All right. A Luna sign is the phase of the dragon moon you were born under. Oh, no. <laughs> we're doing star charts, dude. Yo, who, who was born in September, guys? Let me know. Uh... <laughs> Similar to how we assign birthstones to months in real life, each Luna sign has an associated star stone. You will be able to find these star stones in various, in various rarities and random drops while mining. These star stones will sell you a, for a very high value and buff the econ economic potential of mining significantly. Yeah, because mining, you don't really sell um, anything you mine. You don't really sell. You use it for materials, but that's cool. If you choose not to sell them, you can gift them to villagers who respond positively when receiving their star stone. Uh, Kenyatta, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a star stone for, you know, your birthday. It's going to happen. Okay. I'm just letting you know, uh, we'll be sharing more details as this feature feature develops. So keep checking back on our monthly dev updates, the future of cake parties. Okay. I've been hearing about these never done one, but I do think it's abuse of the money system in Palia. And I feel like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that at all i haven't done it at all i've literally been selling carrots and you know i've been i've been earning my keep dude okay i've been i've been making cake you know i don't bake all right i garden okay get with the times people it is also time to share that in the upcoming 0.169 patch rolling out next week the celebration cake will be rebalanced we recommend having a bake sale this weekend <laughs> dude we will share all the details in the patch notes next week, but rest assured, cake parties aren't going anywhere, but we did need to find the right balance for all our skills. For now, be sure to gather up the jammers, leafers, ovens, and everyone else for another rousing weekend of cake parties. Oh, boy. On the horizon, kneeling emote, next patch. Very cool. New skin tones and facial features. Okay, that's... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I think we talked about this in another video where people were complaining about skin tones. Okay. Like, you know, whatever. Wait, facial features. Beard? Beard? Okay, screw the skin tone update. I, I Can I have my beard now? I'm ready, dude. Ready for the beard. Um, New hunting creatures. New hunting creatures. Wait a minute. I'm a pacifist. That, that means nothing to me. Uh, additional improvements to the request system. Cool. And we haven't forgotten about our, one of our most popular requests here, Downright Demands, to Redacted Redacted. We're just as excited as you are. Very cool. So let's look at that, that patch they mentioned, because I've been missing out. I really have. Psst. Have you noticed? Looks like we are solidly toward the end of September. And just as the leaves turn in the autumn season, Palia will be going through some changes as well. We are seeing the end to some things, the start of others, and in some cases, a whole new look. Change truly is the theme of this patch. So read on below to see what's in store. So I could be wrong, but it looks like they're doing like a autumn theme, like a fall theme for Palia, which would be really cool. Um, four new premium store outfits have been added at a glance. Uh, the Maji market has come to a close. Yep. Uh, Zeki's underground black market has been revamped. Interact with bathtubs and sinks to watch the water flow. Very cool. The celebration cake has been rebalanced. Goodbye, cake. New premium outfits. Not gonna lie, all of these look like garbage. Am I the only one that thinks that? Maybe I am. Who knows? I think these look like trash. I'm not wearing that, dude. What is that? What is that? Th these outfits are not for me. They're kind of garbage. Not, I'm not even looking over that. We're skipping that feature. Oh, look at this. It's so cute. <laughs> look at that. Oh, he's a cute little guy. Um, oh, they've added PayPal support into the game. Cool. N neat. Uh, new features and quality of life additions. The Magic Mark has come to an end. Thank you, everyone, for participating in our first event. Rest assured, the Magic Market will be back one day. Cool. Um... Stamp cards. Interesting. Okay. Uh, overall, we learned a lot from our first game event during open beta and for what themed events should be like for Palia. We plan to use this experience to make our next event even better. Thank you. So they have another event planned. I think that's really cool. Uh, the area for Grimmelkin around Zeki's Black Market has been completely revamped. Uh, 
S6 Eris, Singularity 6 Eris, Eris, may have teased in an MMA that the black mark will be getting blow up. Well, it's here. Wow. That looks really good. Because the, the black market was just like something you found and I haven't bought anything from there because I can't afford it. You know, I don't host cake parties every Friday night. You know, I, I earn my keep by, you know, gardening. Okay. We hope to create a space for players can gather and socialize because who doesn't love to hang out in a shady cave? If you're wondering what the significance of this location is, the stars of the show are Reth and Zeki. Make sure to fulfill their friendship quest for more background information. Oh, so we're going to see Zeki or uh, we're going to see Reth here. That's cool. I like that a lot. Wow. All right. Uh, here are some new points of interest worth checking out. Zeki may or may not have used his duplifier to clone the Wonders Machine, so now a second one can be accessed from the black market for your convenience. Breath will now have a proper bar to work at while visiting here. He'll sell, he'll sell some of the same items you'd see when he's over at the Ormer's Horn Inn. We have plans to eventually change this into more unique items, but for now, let's chalk it up to Reth wanting more people to try out his lettuce soup. His lettuce soup slaps, dude. His lettuce soup is the best thing I have ever had in Palia. I'm just, I'm just saying... I'm just saying it's very good. The Neil emote has been added. Very cool. I like the Sid emote a little better, but that's pretty neat. Um, our previous patch got you feeling hot. Cool down with a bit of running water from your home. Wow. That was aesthetically pleasing. All right. You can now destroy crops. I'm not even going to read this. <laughs> Uh, despite all the meticulous planning involved, sometimes things happen where you just plant the wrong seed accidentally. With the hoe tool selected, hold right click over the specific slot you wish to remove the seed from. You have to fully complete the animation for it to be destroyed. And if you are wondering, no, you will not get the seed back. Please still be mindful when deciding what to plant. Need more seeds? Consider buying them at Zeki's. Zeki. Very cool advertisement. Uh, when you're online, crops will gr continue. Wait, when you're online, crops will now continue growth without requiring you to visit your housing plot? Wait, so even when you're not... Wait, so if you will continue growth without requiring... It, I didn't know you need to check on them every day. I just went there at 6 to, like, water them, but that's interesting. Crops will not continue growth without requiring you to visit your housing plot. But then, what about watering? Unless there's an automatic watering system. Um, Just don't forget to keep your crops watered when they need it. Right, okay. Uh, Note as a reminder, the maximum stage of growth a crop can go through... It's one stage per pally day minus bonuses and fertilizer. Right? Yeah, okay. That's kind of odd, but all right. Um, the icon for tomato and apple seeds have been updated to be more visually distinct. Very good. Um, um, adjustments? Cooking? Oh, wow. Oh, so... The requirement for any preserves and chain to any fruit. The recipe will now also require sugar, which can be bought from General Store Zeki for 20 gold. So they reduced the sell prices for butter and milk. Well, and the buy prices too, but interesting. Okay. Wow, this is a big patch. I just installed it, so we're good to go on that, but um, wow. Bui, bui, <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, mostly, oh, gardening, fishing. Uh, don't care. Um, a lot of this stuff I haven't done yet, so, like, I'm not reading all of these. Wait, oh, mining. Medium-sized pallium nodes now drop an additional pallium ore? Okay, cool. Medium-sized pallium nodes now also grant more skill XP to better match your small and large counterparts? Good. Awesome. I'll take more. I'll take more of anything. Uh, foraging. Um, oh my god. So they just up these prices. These sell for more. That's great. Oh my god. 60 gold. Nice. Whew. The cost of silk. Wait. Oh, to buy silk. Not to sell. So. Jeez. Okay. Oh, there's a Q&A. Okay. New FAQ. So. So th this is basically a nerf. This is the first nerf and buffing they've done of the system. So it's, this is the point, I guess, where people are going to be mad. People are going to be pissed off. And I think that's, you know, it's valid. But like, I mean, Bungie has done this with Destiny a lot too, where they nerf and bu buff things. So anyone who's like the, you know, making cakes, that's nerfed now. You can't 
you're not going to make as much from it. Um, and I guess the same goes for like, uh, you know, people are going to be happy about the Pallium War stuff. People are probably going to be happy about um, this stuff right here, but they're probably going to be sad about that. Like, it's going to happen. This is how it works. Um, are there going to be outfits added with every patch? Yes. What? But dude, the new outfits that got added were garbage. I, they look bad. We need to make money to keep developing Pally and have it be the game that we and our players dream it to be. Selling premium outfits is currently the only way we are making that money, so expect this to be the case for a while. Of course, we are always open to considering other ways to monetize based on feedback from our players, and we'll continue to evolve our approach over time. Now, I have said that they do need to, with areas they add in the future of the game, they do need to monetize that. I think, you know, selling it as like an expansion or something, like 20 bucks, you know, or 10 bucks, something like that. Monetize that, because if you add that in without, you know, having money come from it, that's going to be a mistake. Uh, you know, I, I, they are, they are having ways to make money, which, you know, the plushie that they sold, I bought it still haven't gotten it yet because it hasn't shipped out yet, but still, I, I do think they do. They need more ways to, um, to get money. And that's probably one way I can't think of others other than like maybe more like more cosmetics during the, uh, events that they help that they hold like for Maji Market, they could have done like another event or another uh, cosmetic they could have dropped for that, but that's an idea. But there, I don't know. I think that's one thing they could also do a season pass or a battle pass, whatever you want to call it. I think that could be really cool as well. But yeah, um, are you gonna do something about how players are treating others when it comes to scarce resources like Pallium nodes? Yeah, so there are people that actually, um, you know, they don't tell anyone about their Pallium node, or there are people who all gather up for the pallium node and just hit it repeatedly and no one else gets the reward. So I think that's a valid question. We are very aware of the feedback and discussions that have been raised as of late. We want to be able to find solutions that make sense. And because th these are social features that have a large impact on our player base, we need time to do it right. We'll do our best to share more when we're ready. So yeah, that's a complicated issue because, you know, what they would probably have to do is make it so... What would hurt the player base is if they decided to remove the... If everyone hits the node, everyone gets it. If they remove that feature and only one player can get said node, that hurts the game. So what they need to do is, I don't know, um, perhaps it, my guess is they would have to lock it so the node or the tree, like whatever node you're hitting, whether it be a tree or whether it be mining, like what if, if it's pallium, like, they need to be able to, I guess, it would probably, I don't know if it would hurt the game or make it better, but basically have the player hit it once and they can't hit it anymore until everyone else hit it and basically have a group confirmation of, hey, we're all ready to go. Let's hit the, let's hit the mine or let's hit the rock or hit the tree or whatever. Something like that. You know, if you, if you get what I'm saying, if that makes any sense, I think that's the only way it could work. But also, I don't know how that would work for say, like if there's, Maybe like it's a proximity thing. Like if a player has, if a player is around you and if a player is nearby you or something like that, you can't hit the rock or tree repeatedly. You need to wait for other people um, and then have a confirmation or something, something like that. You know, I'm trying to theorize like how they could go about doing it. And that's probably the best way. Um, I get so frustrated trying to get the sushi recipe or in a certain rare fish after so many times you have planned doing anything about it so for the sushi recipe we actually think it might be a bug for more info please see okay um i'm not even gonna read all of those uh <laughs> but these are a lot of bug fixes top known issues um wait adding 99 fertilizer all nine slots of a gardening plot will make it uninteractable <laughs> that's funny okay um goodness these are a lot of issues Lordy. All right, but these are cool patch notes. I think we've kind of gone over everything that I've missed since I've been uh, moving to a new location. Like I've been, uh, I've been on the move again. These four outfits are garbage. Everything else is. Th this patch was pretty good. I think it was. This was the first. Th I think this was the first patch towards like a good direction. Like this is the first like major patch towards like nerfing and buffing stuff, which is going to be important in the game going forward. Because the more times they do this, the more times people are going to get upset or like it. You know, it it differs, but. I thought this was really cool. It was a really neat, um, really neat update. So glad I caught up on that. Sorry, I haven't been, you know, 
talking about it or, you know, haven't been instantly talking about it, but I had uh, to move. You know, I was do I was in the middle of a move. So that's done. I'm here. So we'll get back to some more content. But anyway, guys, that's going to be the video for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you did, as always, I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.